and the challenge for public policymakers is that, uh, by and large, this is the perspective that Americans have of the policy process. It's very simple. Introduce a bill, pass the House, pass the Senate. It comes a law, right? It's a piece of cake. There's nothing else that really is involved in the minds of a lot of Americans. And um, that's a challenge for policymakers who are trying to commu communicate with people who don't have the level of exposure and understanding you're going to gain over the course of the semester about the policy process. Because I think most people are busy living their lives. They're not studying public policy. They're not advocating. They're not lobbyists. They may occasionally write or communicate with a congressman. But heck, a lot of people don't even vote, right? So uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic, an interesting challenge. But certainly, this is not the thing you're going to leave class from uh, this, this semester. You're not going to, if anything you learn, you're going to learn that anytime you see this video to spread the gospel. This is not how the world works. Although it's very nice and elementary and fun. And a good introduction for someone like me as a kid it gets you interested in learning more. So that's, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, so I think we could start out since we're going to be studying public policy. And the title of this little talk, by the way, is, you know, what is public policy? What is public administration? And does anything we study in this class even matter? You're probably asking yourself that very question. So I think we should start out by asking ourselves, what is public policy? Would anyone like to uh, offer a suggestion? Not a tough question. It's a massive question, but... Could someone give me a one sentence summary of what they think public policy is? Not just reading from your book. We'll get to the book's definition. And they want to have a suggestion. Or do I have to call on names? All right, don't be shy. Uh, Ms. McGill. No, I'm sorry. Jacob. Yeah, I guess it's just the um, act of trying to create solutions to certain problems with a lot of different um, actors and uh, perspectives. I like that. That's pretty good. Act of creating solutions to problems. That was a good sentence. And then you rambled a little, but it was good. <laughs> what, was that? what was the rest of that? There's lots of actors. There's lots of institutions. It's good. You're right. It's tough to get that in one sentence. But that was a very noble effort. The act of creating solutions to problems. Anyone else? Um, sort of the converse to that is the act of doing nothing in right. response to issues. You could say the action or inaction. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. That was a very good point. Subtle point, but an important one. One more. You had, I think, your hand up. Um, like sort of the laws that govern everyday life of citizens. Laws that govern everyday life. And those can come from a lot of different places, right? Not just the federal government, but states and uh, even local city ordinances. Rules that govern our lives, how they're made, how they're developed, how they're implemented, how they're changed. That might be an even more in-depth answer, but along the same lines of what you're thinking, you're all correct to a degree. Let's see what the authors of our text have to say. This is, uh, this is Kraft and Furlong. A course of government action or inaction in response to public problems. So that's a nice, simple one sentence answer. It seems pretty straightforward. Do you guys like this? Does anybody hate this answer? I'll suggest to you that it's not quite as simple as it seems on the surface. It certainly is pretty concise. But let's dig deeper. So. Well, I don't like that it doesn't include non-government actors in it because non-government officials are a huge part of the public uh, policy process. That's a good point, and uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment because we're going we're to dissect this sentence. But you were pointing specifically to this idea of why are we just talking about government? It could also include non-government or private sector interactions, right? So maybe they've overlooked something. It's a very good point. Um, Let's, let's examine this sort of line by line, or in this case, word by word. The first thing we should look at here is a course. What does a course seem to imply? 
uh, kind of like a life cycle, a beginning and an end? That's right. It's a cycle. You shouldn't think of public policy as one action or a static couple of actions. It's actually a course, or as Mr. Rosseo implied, a cycle. Not a single event, but a series of steps and, pro and a process that's constantly evolving. So here, the authors are doing a nice job. They're saying a course of action, not a single action. So one thing you should know going into this, a vote on a bill or a bill becoming a law, that's not really fully capturing what public policy is all about. It's about a process, not a single event. But oftentimes, I think people think of the president signing a bill in the Rose Garden and having a big press conference. as That's public policy. That's the essence of public policy. That's a part of it. But that's only one very small sliver of the, of the whole discipline. The next word that comes up, as Ms. Rinaldi uh, aptly noted, government, a course of government action. So the, the authors here are suggesting that public policy is confined to government action. And so we already have one student who disagrees with that. How does everyone else feel about that? I guess there's an interesting question. Public policy is what we're studying. We're not studying private policy, are we? What is public? What is private? We'll get into that discussion a little bit later. But the thing you should think about here is, with respect to this definition, what type of government is involved in public policy? Federal, Federal is certainly a big one. State? And local. local. So at least those three, you could even consider this as a broad definition to include international public policy. But again, so much of what happens in the world of public policy involves not just government actors. Hopefully you guys picked that up in the Kingdom book. We're going to go through the series of participants in the policy process, government and non-government actors. So maybe, maybe we could criticize Crafton for a long, hey, it's a course of government action Maybe you could say that relates to private individuals or, or nonprofit entities, things like that. So certainly you could be a little bit more broad with the definition. The next word, action. Policy is action. What type of actions? What are we talking about? What is an action in public policy? There are dozens. We should just like start. We should start at the back of the room and we'll work forward. We can get them all here. Go ahead. Regulatory? Regulation. A regulation is, a, is an action. The government regulates something. Uh, agenda setting? Agenda setting. That's part, yeah, certainly that's an action. <laughs> Policymakers who try to drive an agenda. We don't have to keep going down the line. <laughs> but they're even more like technical or, or legal actions. A vote. A vote on a bill. That's an action, right? Congressmen, they vote all the time. Um, Ordinances and cities, laws and states. But it's beyond that. Remember, what about like executive orders, the president? That's an action. Um, enforcement decisions at the bureaucratic level, at the agency level. How laws are administered and implemented. What about advocacy campaigns, the act of advocating for the passage of a bill, right? That, too, is part of the action here that's captured in that word. It's very broad, very expansive. And here is where I think it's important to note, uh, as Ms. Mueller mentioned, the authors might miss something very important, and that's the, 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 the aspect of inaction. Inaction is a part of public policy, because often inaction is a decision. It's a, it's, it's a delaying this tactic that's exercised by members or groups trying to stall a policy. Inaction can be very strategic and can be a very big part of public policy as well. And of course, they say inaction. So I blew that. I thought they didn't say inaction. I think in the book they don't say inaction. Maybe they do. All right, they give them credit. They say inaction. Here's, here's one that I think I kind of quibble with even more. <clears throat> in response to. How do you guys feel about that? Is 
public policy always reactive? And proceeding the problem. Well, you hope so. It can be preceding the problem. I think the authors capture something that is that research that we'll go through will, will demonstrate, um, unfortunately, is the case that often at times, if not the majority of times, public policy as a process is very reactive. So things get done because of incidents or events that occur. And a great example of this, and it's, just sort of, it's, it's almost so obvious and classic, it's, it's not worth mentioning, but something like 9-11, right? That's a pick to that, a crisis moment in our country. If on September 10th, 2001, the president had advocated for an aggressive bombing campaign in Afghanistan to root out the Taliban, do you think that we would have taken a decisive action? Or does it require a response so this is a big challenge in public policy. You know, in order for, for policies to get enacted in, in, in the United States, certainly in our system, it has to generate a lot of attention and momentum. So I think what the authors are getting at here is it's mostly the case, unfortunately probably, that policy tends to be reactive or in response to a problem rather than in anticipation of it. I kind of like it though because it's, it's, it's a kind of um, is it derived from the Constitution where if nothing's wrong, why are you going to regulate something that's not wrong? Why are you going to create powers that aren't in the Constitution that are technically reserved to the states? That's, that's a clear you know? counter-argument. Look, do we want public policy to be made in anticipation of things? And actually, you know, when you're, when you're making that decision to do something in advance of something that could occur, you could be wrong. There could be harm done. Yes? Well, Ms. Patrick uh, Brown was saying something about like, the separation of powers and how um, the legislative and executive branch are set up to be proactive and the judicial branch set up to be reactive, like he was saying, with the Constitution and everything. Judicial branch, and this fits into the question of separation of powers. This is an interesting question. Are they more proactive or more reactive? I think our conventional wisdom suggests they react. They don't make laws, they don't pass laws, they don't vote. The Supreme Court or other courts review laws after they pass. So they're, they are reacting to laws that have been implemented uh, by Congress and the President. But in selecting decisions and cases to hear, the Supreme Court you know, gets petitioned all the time huge volume of people would like to have their case appealed to the Supreme Court. They can't take them all. So maybe they're selective in the ones they pick. It's interesting, but I think, yeah, probably a little bit more reactive. But even Congress and the President, I think a lot of what they do is in response to events that are unfolding. So in the roaring 90s, tech boom, unemployment at, what, 2 or 4%, something like that, would we see the President Clinton calling for a joint session of Congress to advocate for a jobs bill? No, that's not really on the agenda. It's, it's not something that uh, needed to be addressed. So you, a lot of times public policy is, is, is uh, reactive. And then this other question that we, I, just, I touched on briefly, the idea of a public problem. What is a public problem? Does anyone want to offer a definition? A public problem versus, say, a private problem. Here's an interesting uh, question. Unemployment. Actually reminds me of a, 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 a saying. When your neighbor's unemployed, it's a recession. When you're unemployed, it's a depression, <laughs> right? So the question is, is, un is unemployment a public problem or a private problem? Or is it both? Now this is, very broad, we don't have to get into the details, but I'm throwing these questions out to get you thinking about how expansively we, as a society, want the government defining problems that need to be addressed by, by uh, government action, or even government cooperation with the private sector, the nonprofits. And even a problem, again, the last sentence of the, of the, of the, of the definition here, even this idea of a problem itself raises a lot of opportunity for debate. Because how you define a problem, as we'll learn later in the semester, can greatly affect your solution or proposed uh, answer to, to addressing it. 
think of a problem like, uh, un like unemployment. How might if, how, if you define that problem as someone who's lacking income because they don't have a job, what policy might you enact to address that problem of lack of income? Unemployment benefits. You want to address their lack of resources. Now you might have a different approach. If you view unemployment and you define that problem as a lack of skills or the need for training, your policy solution could be completely different because you define the problem differently. It might be more about job, job training or tax credits for you know, higher education. You can even have a mix of both, right? But how you define a problem can greatly affect the type of solution that's proposed. So this is just one definition. I think the common thing that we do, I mean, I know I do this. I asked you guys, what is public policy? Well, let's Google it, right? <laughs> Actually, I have a, a better idea. This is a fun little trick. You guys should love this if you're not familiar with it. Has anyone ever heard of, let me Google that for you? L-M-G-T-F-Y.com. This is a great, this is great. You're going to love it. <laughs> what is public policy? Enter at that website. It creates a link. We'll enter the link up here and watch it play. So you can do this next time someone asks you a really silly question at work, and you want to be snarky. <laughs> Was that so hard? <laughs> and it takes you off. So that's a fun little trick. So yeah, what is public policy? Oh, so shocker, Wikipedia's right there. A government action is generally the principal guide to action taken by the administrative or executive branches of the state with regard to the class of issues in a manner consistent with the law and institutional customs. Very interesting, right? So this is a, a very you know big definition. Um, so another one we could we could amount, we could you know analyze on some uh, really focused level. Here's some other definitions. This is Gersten, who we'll read later this semester. Uh, who does a lot of work on implementation during our implementation of the chapter. He says, it's a combination of basic decisions, commitments, and actions made by those who hold or affect government positions. Again, a lot of focus on the government, which may or may not appeal to, to you guys, as opposed to like including private sector nonprofits. Authoritative allocation of values in society. Here's a more philosophical one. This one is for Mr. Wilson. Because it's all about the values in society. Public policy isn't really, it's actions and it's, you know, passing bills and writing laws. But it really, it's broader, broader and more, you know, bigger than that. It's how we strike a balance between liberty and order and how we adjust over time along this balance. That's a, that's a different way of looking at it, but I think nevertheless <laughs> uh, accurate. Here's one from when I was in uh, your seat, when, one of your positions in, in my graduate program, my professor. The process of deciding who gets what, where, when, and how. I like that one. I think it's concise and pretty direct. But there are a lot of possible definitions. So what I'm trying to hint at here is that as we go into this subject over the course of the semester, I want you to think about it broadly. Public policy affects almost every aspect of your life. So that, that, that helps answer the question, why are we here? Why are we studying public policy? Well, you know, if you have to ask that question, I really, I don't know necessarily if you're actually in this program. Because if you just look at the, the newspaper, well, that's a big story. Maryland's <laughs> going to wear black against West Virginia. I'm from West Virginia, it's big news. Um, they wore some funky uniforms the other weekend, man. But they won. All right. What does this have to do with public policy? <laughs> Wait a second. University of Maryland, state school, right? Governed by state laws, federal tuition dollars, the NCAA, all sorts of rules and institutions that are related to public policy. And it doesn't necessarily appear that way on its face, but pretty amazing. We have this top story about jobs and the presidential campaign. Campaigns are a huge part of public policy process. We'll learn more about that this semester as well. But we have a bit of a controversy, a scandal. 
this decision to grant loans in the stimulus package, the, the old one from 2009. So the, 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 the expense of resources to promote green energy that, that didn't work, that's public policy. Taking public funds and distributing them to companies uh, to pursue uh, certain, certain industries. All on and on, I would argue that nearly everything on this page has some connection to public policy. And you'll say, well, that's easy, Professor Rafferty. That was, that's simple, because it's the Washington Post. And that's just always going to be talking about government. Uh, you know, we live here in Washington. So let's look at something like Now, I'm going to hit this, and I don't know what I'm going to see, because the Steelers lost. It was very traumatic, and it's still probably big news. But maybe there's something else in the headlines. Interesting. This is a local, this is a, a more regional paper, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. They don't focus every headline on national government. They're not following Congress as closely as the Washington Post. Nevertheless, we see all sorts of uh, things in, in here that are related to public policy. Council to end night metered parking. Interesting. That's a local issue, but certainly not on the public park policy. The Pirates extend losing to 19 seasons. That should be a public policy. That should be. <laughs> we should just. Oh man. It's rough. I'm a Pittsburgh fan. It's not good times for us right now. But there's all sorts of stories. You know, we have. Uh, it's even pictures, you can pull things out. Gun control, pistols. Should people be able to, to sell? What, what, type, what type of rules and laws should, should govern the, the possession of, and sale of firearms? Um, you know, housing values. How does the county assess housing value to raise tax revenue? Obviously, that's a huge public policy. It has huge implications on individuals who are paying taxes and also the government that needs the money for the, to, to, to manage the programs that they implement. The top line, council votes to stop enforcing nighttime meter parking. Again, it's a local issue. Harrisburg, that's the state capital in Pennsylvania. So even a paper like Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and I would argue other papers from wherever you're from, are going to have similar headlines. And even something like this picture, IGA is open for business. A new supermarket. So that's a private company. That's nothing to do with the government, right? There's no public policy involved in the supermarket. Or is there? Where are some, I mean, I, I guarantee you there are rules governing uh, from the Department of Agriculture, the type of, uh, you know, to protect the food and, uh, that's uh, coming to you from FDA, right? FDA would have rules, or Department of Agriculture would have rules about all the produce that's able to be legally sold at these type of stores. OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, would have rules about the type of, uh, sort of safety mechanisms that the workers have to have access to, back braces, things like that. Public policy is everywhere, okay? Everywhere, all around you, all the time. That's why it's important. 